Hey guys, this is a video to show you how to use Logic for Apple when you first get started out. Now there's plenty of videos on the internet, on YouTube, about how to use Logic, how to get started, and they're very basic, and if you watch all the videos, then you can be very good at what you do, but I kind of want to give you an idea of how to get started and use everything as fast as you can with all the basic features and how to fix all the problems that you're going to run into. So here is Logic when it's open, and this is something that I had open before. You'll probably see something like this, where it gives you a template for what you're writing. Now, this is actually really awesome because you can create an empty project, which a lot of professionals do. They'll create an empty project and they'll go from there. But depending on what you're doing, an electronic project, a hip hop, a vocal with R&B, a rock, or a songwriter, you have all these options that it'll come with so you don't have to do that work in adding the tracks later. So you can play around with these. I generally just choose the rock feature because most of the music that I record is rock oriented. Obviously this right here is going to be the save features on you know what to do here. You just save as whatever you need to be you need for it to be called. Saving something is a tedious task all the time, but as soon as you have something called untitled 456 or 4556, you're going to be in a lot of problems. So I highly recommend that you call this anything that has to do with. We're going to call this the YouTube or we're going to call this a YouTube test. And we're just going to save it. Now, here is all the tracks. There's a click track, a headphone mix, some vocal tracks right here, two bass tracks. Everything you need to basically run your interface into here and record. First thing you'll notice is that if you just hit record right here, it's not going to start recording anything. If you press record on these individually, you're probably not going to see any recording going on here. So what's the problem? The problem is you have to click on this I right here. This I is the input button. This one accepts all your sound from the input. The guitar is going to be all the effects that the guitar that your input is going to be going in, and then this these two right here are the amps. You want to hit the I on one of these two or both of these two to actually hear some sort of guitar or bass sound, and I'll give you an idea of what that's like now. So as you can hear probably, I have a guitar on me, I'm playing it, it's connected to my interface, but you're not hearing anything out of the actual software itself. So the first thing you want to do is hit the I. The I is going to give you the input. If you hit the I, I'm going to hit the I on the Creamsicle Crunch because this one is a really nice toned amp. You'll actually start to hear... You'll hear the guitar come out of it. So with this input that it recognizes from the preference, so if you want to put in an interface, you just go to File or you go to Logic Pro, Preferences, Audio, and I have my settings to built-in output and UX2. The input device is my interface itself. The output device is the speakers that my computer are, is connected to. So as simple as that, you want to record any guitar track that you have or any bass track on the actual amp track. So what you're going to do is hit the record button on this one, arm it, and then just go ahead and hit record. And there's the recording. So you move the scrubber all the way back, hit the space bar. And there you go. You have your recording stock footage right there. All of your stuff is there. And you can go ahead and mix from here. You can go to your mixer. You can mix the channel. You can go to your piano roll. Do anything you want from here. But as soon as you get this track recorded on here, you're already on key because this is usually the biggest problem that a lot of people have is the fact that their input's not being re read and the record isn't armed so they really can't get a recording sound. The second problem is latency. When you plug into the built-in output, normally like the speakers I have here, you don't have studio monitors, you're probably going to get latency and it's extremely annoying because it can make it so that you'll never be able to record. If you're going to hear your guitar at the same time as the track you're playing, or if you're going to be listening to the click track, everything's going to be off, and it's going to be almost impossible to record any lines. 
So to fix that, you can click this right here, and this is a low latency mode. This sometimes solves the problem, and if it does, then there you go. You can just click that, and you're fine. If not, you have to go a little bit more in-depth. So you go to Logic Pro, Preferences, Audio, and right over here, it's going to give you a recording delay setting. What you do is you slide the meter closer away from this zero right here to see if it's making any bit of a difference of how great of a latency it has. This will most likely fix the problem after that. Now, if this here doesn't fix the problem, the final thing you do is change the buffer size. Start all the way at 32, and then you'll see that it's going to be in sync. After that, go to 64. At 128, mine still stays in sync, so I record at 128 buffer size. Uh, 64 is perfect for me as well, and 32 is perfect. Any one of these will work for you. Your computer might be able to go to 256 and still have no latency problems. These three ways are the only ways that I know how to fix latency. If you still have latency after this, then there's something wrong with the interface itself because I've been able to fix everybody's interface on their computers with these three tricks. Now that you have your stock recording right here, you're probably going to want to add a little bit of effects. You're probably going to want to change the effects of the of the amp, you're going to want to do that, you don't want to just sit with these settings here, so all you do is go up here and click on media, and here is your library. Depending on which one of these tracks you click and what kind of tracks they are, it'll give you different uh, different situations to put yourself in. So right now I have a creamsicle crunch setting, I can go over here and change that amp however I want, and you can see on the track this amp is being changed and various different sounds I can get. So. Originally, I had the creamsicle crunch, which sounds like this, you know. But I can give myself a different sound here. Or I can actually go into a reverb type sound and maybe get a low budget reverb crunch. Just and you're basically given all the things that you need sound-wise for any one of the things that you see here. If you want to add loops, like a drum loop, because it's really hard to find a drummer to record with, let alone record drums, period. So if you need that little extra loop for drums, or any kind of loop, really, go to your loops section up here, and just like in GarageBand, all of your loops are right here, and it's as simple as just clicking all or any, just click reset and just click uh, all drums, and click on any one that you think sounds good. And then it's as simple as dragging it over to any one of these, but I would just put it in the drums section and dropping it there. And then you can just command or command copy and just keep going over and over again and then you'll have a loop of drums that you can play on and record for so you don't actually have to find a drummer, which is actually really awesome. It is very important that you record on the right track because these tracks all have effects that are either built into them or they have parameters that you might not hear when you're initially playing before recording but when you when after you record you'll get that terrible noise that you didn't want in the first place and then you have to go back and change it so you have to move the track so record on the amp track normally for any kind of bass or guitar move all the drum tracks to the actual drum track all the vocal tracks to the vocal track actually go into each one of these tracks and kind of set them to the way that you want them so that you don't have to go back and do that later. It saves the editing process at the end a lot of time. So that is how you use Logic Pro the first time you get it, and those are some of the problems you run into, and hopefully you will not have those problems anymore. If you guys have any more questions on how to do something when it comes to just starting this out, I will answer them to the best of my abilities. Thank you very much for watching.